Okay, let's talk about our patient today. Our patient today is a dentist. Young lady, a preeminent lecturer. The dental hygienist from Bulgaria. Buffalo, New York. Atlanta, Oklahoma, Vancouver, Canada, Boston, Kansas City, San Francisco, Montreal, Munich, Germany, London, and Santa Maria, California. Now we're going to place 14 lumineers, 8 lumineers, 10 lumineers, 6 lumineers, 10, 2, 8, 8, 10, 10, 8, 10, 8 lumineers today on our patient. And now we're not treating teeth anymore. We're treating smiles. Isn't that beautiful? So let's look at the transformation from where we started and where we are. Our patient today is an example of that. Okay, let's talk here a little bit. Uh, I'll show you how we're getting started. We're going to do uh, something extra today. I've never done this before. I feel like Evil Knievel jumping over more cars than I've ever jumped over before. But we're going to put on more lumineers in one sitting than I've ever done. Total. We got 18 pieces of porcelain here. So this is a real leap for me. The most I've ever done at one time is uh, 10. But uh, once we get rolling, you'll see it doesn't take that much longer. It takes almost as long to do one as it does to do 10, uh, especially if you're doing one over. So let's take a view at what Lisa's done before we got started here, because I just walked in and Lisa spent what takes about a half hour for you to do this and uh, get everything set up. So uh, at any rate, Lisa's got all these things out and she's pre-treated the porcelain. Now what she's done with the porcelain is put two solutions on it. And if you put two of the right solutions on, everything works. If you put one of the two or none of the right two, then nothing works. So the first thing she did is put porcelain conditioner on to uh, pre-treat and activate the serenade prime, which is a silene. Now, silenes are very unique chemicals because at one end, they chemically react with inorganic materials, the ceramic material. And on the other end, they react with resin. And so uh, basically, once they get activated, they start reacting with themselves. So you don't want to activate your silane until just before you're ready to place it. So let's get started with a few of the tips that we have here. One is that I'm using uh, four power magnification, not two. Four power magnification will enable you to work faster, do better dentistry. And when you see me doing the finishing and get right in those interproximal areas, I couldn't do it as precisely and, and as easily as I can when I have four power, not two and a half power. The other thing that's going to be very important is the pack light. And usually if you want to have controversy in your office, you put one in and then everybody fights to use it. The other thing that's really important is getting a good impression. It sounds simple. It is simple. We recommend the Luminaire's impression material uh, because you can take a double wash and really get precise gingival margins. We never retract the gingival tissue. Uh, we always have it stop, terminate at the gingivin. If you want to do gingival contouring, we think that's a good idea too. Now, in your case, your son has done some gingival contouring for you, hasn't he? Yes. yes. His son's a dentist too, by the way. We're coming up to a real big story here. And uh, when you take that impression, you want to be sure you leave it in long enough. If you ever have a case come back and your luminaires fit the model, and they don't fit the teeth, it's probably because you had distortion in the impression. Can't see distortion, so the best way of guarding against it is let it stay in the patient's mouth for an extra minute or so. It's uh, time well spent for insurance. And one of the things that will be interesting today is uh, doctor's uh, upper right first bicuspid is a porcelain crown. So we're going to do surface treatment for a porcelain crown on the upper right first bicuspid and bond to that and they're going to bond to these lowers at the same time. So I'm going to take a micro etcher and etch the surface, or micro etch the surface, micro braid it. Okay. I'm going to do a little polishing here. See a little bit of plaque here on that second by. We're only going the second by, right? 
you want to think about what we're going to be doing now. We're going to be doing surface preparation. And the first thing I'm going to do is think about ease of uh, finishing. And one of the things that's going to make it easy is I'm going to put some paint on dental dam all over the surfaces of the tooth where I don't want the ultra bond to bond to the tooth. And so put that all over here. And I like to put it on the occlusal of the bicuspids. Close your eyes. Take the nine millimeter tip about an inch from the surface and I'm applying paint on dental dam on the lingual side. And by being about an inch from the surface and giving it a three second exposure, I cure the paint on dental dam to a rubbery state. And as I said, once you repair the surface, the laminate, the luminaire, doesn't know what kind of a surface it's being bonded to. Let's go ahead and second. Close your eyes. Close your eyes, everybody. Best way to protect your eyes is to close them. So I feel, make sure that it's not still running. This is really good. What you have to be careful about sometimes with patients with uh, diastemas is that you don't want it coming from the, the blue paint on dental dam coming from the lingual side to the labial. There it is. Now the next step we're going to do on the porcelain crown preparation, surface preparation, a little brush here. I'm using porcelain. Porcelain is a buffered hydrofluoric acid. So I like to use a medium viscosity. It's the uh, least toxic of any hydrofluoric acid you could use. I leave it on for about a minute. This is after I have done what? Micro-etched. And if you don't have a micro-etcher, you can always use a diamond to take off the glaze. I want to be sure we get all this out. And this is serenade conditioner, porcelain conditioner. This is the organic acid that we're putting on there. Now at this point, we're treating this uh, porcelain jacket in exactly the same fashion as Lisa treated the porcelain veneers before the patient got in the chair. And on the natural teeth, I'm using etch and seal, medium viscosity. So the citric acid is being applied to the porcelain and the phosphoric acid is being applied to the natural tooth, the calcium. I like to use etch and seal because it contains aluminum oxalate. And if you get phosphoric acid on dentin, the, um, uh, the aluminum oxalate will seal the tubules. So we leave that on for about 20 seconds and then we wash it off. Okay. And I'm putting the serenade prime on the porcelain surface. Now I'm going to put on the tenure AB. I like tenure AB because it's simple to apply. And when you're modding to enamel or dentin, you know that it'll always combine with whatever, whatever composite you're working with. Okay, now what we're going to do with the patient is do shade selection. Normally, I don't like to put all of the uh, lumineers in and let the patient look at them because they never look very good. And there's always something wrong. I'm putting the left central on without any try-in paste. So that's the shade of it without anything underneath it. What you're getting back is reflection of the etched surface. Now we have the same shade, Luminaire. And you can see the difference in the shade when you have the try-in paste on there. The reason for it is that once you exceed the what they call the index of refraction, light stops going forward, it comes back to you, and it reflects off the back surface of whatever is there. Now when we put the uh, 
luminaire on with the tri-end paste, the index of refraction is consistent with the tooth and the porcelain luminaire. So patients like to be involved with the process, as you know, and uh, if you start off with something that doesn't look quite right, they spend all their time looking for what's wrong, and they've got you jumping through hoops, and you're jumping through hoops, and saying this doesn't look very good. And I have to tell you that even when they look good, they don't look as good as they're going to look after you get finishing. The secret of a good lumineer dentist is to have the ability to finish. Now, what we have on the right side is B1, and on the, on the left, is B0. and on the left is B0. So we're going to let our patient select the shade now. You like the left or the right? They're pretty close. The right one? Left one? This one or this one? This one? That one. Okay. That's the one I like too. So I think you made a wise choice there. You always want to congratulate your patients on making a wise choice. We decided on shade B1. And so I'm applying tenure S to the surface because tenure S will protect the surface from contamination. It'll also polymerize some of the triune paste, so if I linger too long, uh, I may not get the luminaire to fit exactly right. Everything looks pretty good here. Central. Left central. Lisa always calls the name of the tooth out, and I repeat it. And I need the right one real quick. Right lateral, okay. And the other reason I don't like to look at them on try-in is because all the margins are open. There we go. And I'm using a brush to gently remove this. And I want to make sure that when I place it on there, I don't place it hard, but I see excess oozing out around the margins. And as long as I see that, I know I have what? Enough ultra bond between the tooth and that. What I'm doing now is spot curing with the two millimeter tip for one second in the middle of the tooth. And then you want to make sure you have these placed just right with your eyes. Okay, now what I've done is I've spot cured these in place, and I'm going to come over to the right side now. Okay. Guess what? We're putting a veneer over what? Porcelain crown. No big deal. The veneer doesn't know it's a porcelain crown. It doesn't know if it's enamel. Close your eyes. So I'm going around now, checking everything out, removing a lot of the excess. And I will take a brush and wipe a lot of that off. Now I can see that I've got ultra bond between the porcelain everywhere. And I've got a little tenure S on here, and I'll wipe some of this off. Now think about what I'm going to do. I'm going to bond. 10 lumineers in about one minute. Five seconds, nine millimeter tip. Let's take a look at the lingual side here. And we'll start pulling off the paint on dental dam. Now, 
we've done two things. We've done, excuse me, we've done surface preparation and we've done bonding. Well, now what I'm going to do is the lowers. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, now you got to put your tongue back there. And now we put 10 year S on. We already have picked out the shades, so we know about that. See, a race begins between contamination and resin. And whoever gets there first, or whichever gets there first, wins. Okay. Right. Right central? Okay. Lateral. Right lateral. Here. Now give me the two millimeter tip for one second. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Okay, now we'll go to the left side and put the cuspid in the bicuspid. And you notice I did not cure the most distal veneer. And then I want to spot cure this down here. Hold still, close your eyes. And the reason I do the gingival is when I do the maxillary, I always do the incisal half. Okay. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Now we have these tacked in place. And we'll give everybody a look at the lingual side. This is when I really like the pain on dental dam is on the lingual with these lowers. What I'm looking for on the lingual side is to make sure that I have enough ultrabond between the porcelain and the tooth so they'll become one solid fused mass. Now I'm going to apply five seconds with the nine millimeter tip on each tooth. And we'll do two teeth here because they're small. And we'll do two teeth here because they're small. Close your eyes. Now I take a Sure 349, and it's in the clinician's finishing kit, and Lou will tell you all about it. We, we used to tell everybody we do this, and then we do another one, and we do another one, and what happens is that people said, well, they're having trouble keeping track of it, so they asked us to put them in one kit. So everything I'm using here is in what you call the clinician's finishing kit. And the nice thing about the Sure 349 is it won't scratch glazed porcelain. I don't care how hard you try, you can't scratch glazed porcelain with it, or at least you can't scratch serenade porcelain with it. So I'm using a 12 fluted burr. Now we're going into the stage of finishing. Remember we did surface preparation and bonding. And what we're doing is taking off the ultra bond. Now this won't take off the porcelain. I mean, it'll take off the glaze and scratch it up if you're not careful, but I'm letting this be guided by the porcelain. And this just removes the ultra bond that's on the inner proximal embrasures. So all we're doing is bonding and putting on and then we play takeaway and the most frequent question I get is why didn't I use dental floss to open the contacts and I think I told you because I'm scared to because when these contacts are just right and you put the thickness of floss in there you're liable to displace them even with the technique of half curing and then coming back in the full way and all that 
I'm not interested in ease of finishing, and I am interested in ease of finishing. I'm interested in as my primary objective is to get a stress-resistant non-microleaking restoration. The next step will be to take a uh, football-shaped diamond, and we'll go on the lingual side and start blending the ultrabond and the porcelain together for one day a month. And what I'm doing back here that you can't see is I'm blending on each tooth the ultrabond and the porcelain, serenade porcelain all together. They are now one solid homogeneous mass. And this is the diamond I'm using, the long, narrow, ultrafine diamond. And what I'm doing now is making sure I'm taking out as much as the ultrabond from in between the contacts as possible. And now I know what I'm touching is porcelain. Why? Because I took out the ultrabond. And then I can go into those interpoxal embrasures. My objective now is to blend the shoulder that I've created. See, if you haven't created a preparation, then you've created a shoulder right here. And I've got this magnification. I just follow the outline of the tooth, and I'm just getting those shoulders taken care of, defining the incisal edges so the teeth look distinctive. Now, a little tip about bonding to porcelain, it's different than bonding to enamel. And the little tip is this, that it takes about 24 hours for a silenated bond to mature. So I never try to open the contacts where I bonded porcelain on a porcelain crown. And I wait at least 24 hours before I try to open that embrasure. And I don't try to open them all on the same placement visit. But uh, let's have a little marking paper. Now gently close your teeth together. And that kind of gives you some idea of what we've achieved already and we're not finished. Let's take a look at the lingual here. And you can see we don't have very much ultrabond on there. It's almost all cleaned up. This is called a seri saw. And you want to think about what we have here. We have removed almost all the ultrabond as much as possible. And so we don't have very much in these contact areas. That's the secret to opening them and making it easy. Many dentists go in with the saw first, and then they try to take out the ultrabond, and that's hard work. But what we do here now is we take this between the contact, and it's a very thin stainless steel saw. And if it gets a little tight on the going through, then we stop and we just rock it. Some of these contacts are really opening nice and easy. Now you're wondering about the lowers, but they open the same way if you take the ultrabond out first. If I get into a tight spot, it's because I still have too much ultrabond in there. And then I just rock a little bit. But so far, I've opened almost every one I've tried to uh, open. And if you, if you open, say, like two out of three, three out of four, one out of three, when the patients come back a week later, they've opened a lot of them themselves. And even the areas that were a little tight, so I'm using a lot of pressure, but finger control, rocking it, and I'm going to do a little bit more contouring so we have a good emergence profile. Sometimes it's porcelain and sometimes it's ultrabond. But anyhow, when the patients come back on a follow-up visit, they're rested and they haven't been sitting in the chair very long. And then I spend another half hour doing things like this, and they don't think this is anything. Now let's have the Seri Sander. And I just go through here to get rid of the rough edges, because just because you went through there with the Seri saw doesn't mean you've smoothed anything. And uh, can you hear that crunching? And so what I'm doing now is going to run some dental floss through here.
Now let's take a look at the lowers here and see what kind of marks we have. Close. Now let's take a look at the lingual side up here, the maxillaries. And they're about 80 to 90% finished. I always tell my patients they're not finished yet. Let's take a look at the mandibular. We got a heavy spot right here on this lower right first bicuspid. And this one has the luminaire on it, and this one doesn't. So they look pretty close to a natural color. And I'm going to take the uh, finishing diamond here, and we want to get these so they occlude harmoniously. Occlusion is a very important part of this. Gently close, grind your teeth around, open, gently close, grind your teeth around, open, open real wide, a mirror. Now we're beginning to get multiple points of contact. Let's see what we have on the maxillary first. So I'm getting contact on the natural tooth, contact on the unnatural tooth, the bicuspid, Contact on the bicuspid on the natural tooth. Wherever I see the blue, I'll relieve it a little bit. All on the natural teeth. Close. Gently grind your teeth around. Go forward and back, sideways. Okay, open. Now let's see what we have. Okay, now we're getting it. And so we want to get it so that, uh, let's see what the max area looks like. A couple of spots, Explorer. Okay, and we want to make sure we don't hit heavy on these areas right here, but so far we're looking relatively good. Now let's go down here on the lower, open, and we start removing the heavy blue spots because you want to have a harmonious protected occlusion, not sharp line angles on the incisal edges. And this is a spot where in time you want to spend a lot of time to prevent your luminaires from being fractured after you install them. Now we've taken off an inclined plane. You don't want to shorten the teeth. You want to go on inclined planes. And I'm sure you all know that it's buccal of the upper and lingual of the lowers that frees everything up. I tell patients that for the first week, they'll have some flaking, but it's not their tooth generally or their porcelain. It's generally the uh, ultrabond coming off, even though it looks tooth colored. Might take a quick look here, see the transformation. Isn't that amazing? Huh? Okay, now we'll take the football shaped diamond. Looking wide. Here's the needle nose diamond now. Now I'm using the long narrow diamond. Okay, now I don't like to use a lot of force on these lowers on the placement visit because there's not a lot of area. And if I use too much force, you can break them. Or so I'll take that long narrow diamond again. So once we got that little bit in there, but what I like to do is if I have too much force, I like to just wait 
and do them on a follow-up visit. But these have so much taper to them that it still works out pretty good. Okay. All I did is that routine stuff of taking uh, Ultrabond away and opening the contacts. Why don't you give me a Seri sander here and I'll open this up a little bit. I haven't opened uh, the, the contact right here on this cuspid or bicuspid because he's going to be back tomorrow. And these were a little tight getting out. And so I don't want to put too much force on, especially on lowers because they don't have so much area. It's pretty easy to uh, pop them off or break them or something like that in the early stages. They have less surface area than maxillary centrals and all that. All right, now close. Open. That's it right there. That's perfect. Now I'm going to take your hand and turn it over this way a bit. And that's the first bicuspid is a porcelain fused to porcelain crown. Look at the color transformation when you look at that lower second by and contrast it with the first by. And we'll just gently take you through here. That's good. Ten on the uppers and eight on the lowers. I'm just relieving some high spots here on the eccentric so that we don't get some uh, fractures. I especially want to protect the... Uh... Okay. Well, uh, let's see. I'd like to recommend to everybody, if you get a chance, come out here and visit us in sideways country like uh, Charles did. And uh, he uh, found that was quite helpful to you. Would you say the two-day course you took there? What that did is really uh, make it really believable and they realized it was something you could do. You get to see live placements, so I'd really recommend that for anybody. And then, of course, the other ones you want to attend are like the three-day meetings uh, where you get to, of course, you're fortunate because you got Dr. Maltzmacher for two days, but he's on all our three-day programs generally and uh, doing a lot for dentistry and we're having a lot of fun and we're saving a lot of people from having their teeth cut down, but more than that, Look how many people you're finally going to get to treat who would like to look better, and we're not forcing them to go through the torture rack in order to do that. Okay, so with that. I chose to get Lumineers because I've been doing these now for three quarters of a year on patients of mine, and I've become envious of the results and uh, wanting to have it done myself. Well, my main problem with my smile was that I never showed my teeth much because uh, I was not that fully satisfied and confident with them. There wasn't really any pain at all. The um, I was amazed that much could be done. That was a lot to be done. We did 18 in one sitting, a new record for Dr. Ipsen on Lumacast. There's going to be a lot better response because, see, I've already seen how this affects my consultations for Invisalign, the invisible braces for orthodontics. While I was going through that process of straightening my teeth, at the end of the consultation, I would pull out the Invisalign aligners and say, see, I'm wearing them myself. And they were amazed. They hadn't even noticed. Now, I can do the same thing at the end of a Luminaire consult. I'm just waiting to see my wife's reaction when she comes back in the next hour or so. Uh, she's going to be envious of me. She was one of my first patients that, with Lumineers, and I think I made every mistake uh, in the book. And... Uh, She's going to be wanting me to do her case over it and, and get it as good looking as mine. They say this is the biggest advance in the history of dentistry. Uh, the ability to, in a matter in my case, 18 veneers changed my whole smile in just, eight, in just about an hour and 50 minutes, I guess, with what's the entire procedure from start to finish, including finishing, just blows my mind. And uh, I just would recommend it for anyone. It's very non-invasive.